welcome to the April 1st, 2024 Development Review Board meeting for the City of Montpelier. Um, this meeting is now called to order, and Meredith will go over the remote meeting procedures. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, I think everybody who's on remotely has seen this except for Fred. So this is both for people who are attending remotely right now, as well as um, people who might be watching live stream over Orca Media. Um, I'm going to get in your space in just a minute. Just frame it or And I'm going to tweet something so that people can actually see that link. There we go. Okay, so for anyone watching tonight's meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the Development Review Board discussion through either video or telephone access options. Um, you can either type this link into your web browser, and I'll get a notification that you want to join the meeting through my email, or you can dial this phone number, and when prompted, put in this meeting ID. And again, I'll get a little email or a notification that you want to get into the meeting. Um, if you have problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, um, I will be monitor monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, and if you're having issues with sound quality, actually turning off your video can make a big difference and make sure that we can hear you and you can hear us. For everyone attending, um, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will help reduce background noise. Um, and if you have questions or otherwise wish to speak and haven't already been called on by the chair, please raise your hand um, or you can use the um, raise hand button on your Zoom toolbar and then the chair will call on you. Um, please note that the Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question, if anyone has a question or comment about an item on the agenda, if you're on via Zoom, um, please raise your hand. If you're here in the audience, again, also raise your hand and then you can come up to the um, podium with the microphone to talk. Um, in the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Thank you. Uh, dear B members, let's uh, introduce ourselves, maybe starting in the top right hand corner there, Rob. Rob Goodwin, Vice Chair, DRB. Great. Joe? Joe Kiernan, DRB board member. And then over at the end. Kevin O'Connell, uh, DRB member. Meredith Crandall, staff. <laughs> Chair Nellon, Chair. Catherine Burgess, member. Um, so we have two applications tonight. I feel like, um, if we are tidy with our time that we can probably get through both of them tonight in a, in a fairly decent manner. Um, I guess, uh, let's, um, is everyone raise of hands for people who are here for 172 River Street? Okay. And then Fred remotely. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, unless there are other comments, let's just get started on that. Well, approval of the agenda. Oh, I, you know, I have that starred so that I would remember that. <laughs> Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? Great. Uh, so um, for testifying tonight on what? You have to vote. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to do the approval thing, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we have a um, motion. We have a second in favor. All those in favor of approving the agenda? Aye. 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 Those not in favor? <laughs> Good. It's all Sorry, there. I got it no, in the minutes. <laughs> no, that's totally fine. Um, okay. Uh, so for people who are going to be testifying, it's the 172 River Street. Uh, if... And um, Fred, will you be testifying also? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, can... Only only if I have to add something. Yeah. May as well. If okay. you think there's a possibility you'll have have say anything, I, I'd like to get you. Just swear you in. 
Okay, yeah. go ahead. I'm trying to swear yeah. you in. So any, any anybody who is planning on testifying for 172 River Street, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Great. Um, if you could just do a very brief introduction, I just think this is a pretty straightforward one, and then we'll go to the applicant so you can then sort of bring us through this process. Yeah. Great. Um, so this is some changes at the rub -dub, um car wash out on River Street, um, and it's, I don't know if the DRB has ever seen this project before, um, because it previously was a permitted use, um, and, you know, it's been there for decades at this point, um, but in the 2018 zoning changes, the car wash in this zoning district was changed to a conditional use, so because there's some changes to how that use is done, and because the building is getting bigger, um, I had it come here before the board. Because I'm not allowed to approve those changes. Okay. Um, your name? Mitchell Patera. Great. Uh, do you want to just give us a little quick description of what you've got going on there, sort of your process Absolutely. of what you're planning on doing? Yep. Uh, we have five bays right now, uh -huh. one self-service and one automatic. And we'd like to offer more one, one more choice for our customers. So we're taking out two of the self-service bays, and we're going to add in one more automatic. Um, to do that, I needed to add six feet to the rear of the building for one bay, basically from me to Alex here. That's as wide as we have to go. Um, but we're reducing from five bays down to four bays. But uh, we also think it's going to make it a nicer project, nicer building, nicer property. Okay. Um. We're not encroaching on the, the road. Right. We're only moving that one bay that has to be six feet longer just out. And we're going at an angle, so it won't even be six feet out. It'll be slightly less than that because it's going to be diagonal. We'll line up the way the other building is. So the um the things that I had, I just wanted to make sure that um, we've covered them, and it looks like it. Uh, and... Um, this is not something that I actually knew before reading this tonight is that uh, car washes are required to contain all their wastewater on site and prevent it from running off into the property or municipal um, storm drains, which makes sense. So uh, is that any of that configuration going to change with the new bay? No. No. Still going to have the water going the same way it always did. Okay. Oh, Alex, can you just pull your microphone a little yeah. closer? Just Where do you contain it? Well, the water goes... Uh, or do you clean it and then discharge it? Yes. They, no. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> they, 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 we got, uh, there's three collecting pits. So you got the floor where you wash your car and the dirt goes on the floor. That catches the bulk of your mud. Then you got the dirty water, which goes into the drain. And there's another drain there, which catches your mud. And then it goes into a big pit, which collects 90% of your mud. Then it goes up and goes to another pit where it collects even more, and and then it goes out into the sewer. So water does go into the sewer, but it's just been cleansed of particulate matter. And we have the PMP septic. Used to be the city, but the PMP septic comes down and keeps those uh, tanks clean. Did you do you recycle the water? No, at all? no. It's just it's a one shot deal. Correct. So are no. there chemicals? No. Oh. No, everything is, is approved for the state to be used. I'm just curious, a uh, little relevance to this, but the other uh, car wash um, up on uh, Pioneer Street? Laser? The laser, right. That that has a collection system and a reuse, doesn't it? I think they're similar to me, how it's done, where it collects and collects, and then they have PMP septic come every few weeks, same okay. as I do. Sorry to get distracted, but, but I've always wondered about it that. It pretty much has to be done. Yeah. Nobody uses, nobody recycles the water. Okay. We used to recycle the water. We tried to do that in our original building, and, it, and you can't clean the cars with milky water when it's rinsing the car. It just doesn't. It just doesn't work. A lot of dirt roads in Vermont. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, but it means that that milky water is also going into the sewer treatment plant. 
correct. Storm water system. Storm water system, as it as it has and as it does for all car washes, and that is not something that we can change here. Yeah, and they've. I mean, it's the cleaning requirements are per the state on right. that one. Yeah. Yeah, so and it's keep in mind, and keep in, keep in mind, you're getting rid of two bays and adding only one, and so that usually that should be less water use. I didn't mean it to be an oppositional question. It was a curious question. I'm okay, just, sorry. Trying to help. <laughs> okay. Um. So the other thing that actually uh, that is kind of a tricky spot where you are there, although it seems like the um, traffic has worked actually pretty well there in terms of. You know, it's a big, huge curb cut, but there's time enough to get out of the bay and not be in the road. Um, uh, we've owned it for 35 some odd years, close to 35 years. We've never had an issue. And the people that owned it before us had it even longer, you know. So, I mean, there's been no issue with that. Yeah. No, it seems like it's so, set up pretty well. You don't want cars cutting in front of each other trying to get out because if you know you're, you're you're kind of sheltered, you don't have a view left or right, you stick your nose out and somebody's coming that way along with your traffic, it would be a very bad situation. Yeah. So that's why the curb cut is the entire extent. Yes. If you, if you, so, you don't have a lot of room between, it was built right. way back when you don't have a lot of room between the road and that. Right. And way back when they didn't have suicidal bike lanes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you said that. <laughs> one below my house is painted cross traffic. <laughs> I know I did. That was a, my one point of humor in reading all of this is that you probably didn't need a bike rack. I'm like at a car wash. I mean not. <laughs> I, yeah. I I do what I can with the regulations we have to, <laughs> to help guide the discussion. Um. Staff might want a bike. Yeah, right. Be right. Ready for the back ride. <laughs> you know, back and sell a transfer. Yeah. So my good. That's so good enough. Okay. I guess that little note in my staff report about the Casella transfer station didn't wasn't a hundred percent accurate. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get okay. There. Um landscaping uh requirements. Um there's really nothing being changed there. Um so I Trees seem like they'd be a really bad idea. <laughs> uh, the lighting is the same except for one uh, light that's going to be moved in the back between the two bays. Is that correct? There's well, yeah, the back. We put, we put so they would light up the uh, four bays. We had two lights that light yeah. up that area. Yes, that will be changed. We're okay. probably going to go similar to a down uh, drop light like at the other one. LED type style, something like that. Okay. So uh, we honestly didn't even get to that part of picking out a light for that, but mm -hmm. we're going to make it look good to create a good both the same to make it look good. And that's an existing light that's there right now. Yes. And is that shielded? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Um, it's also in the back of the building. It's in the back of the building. It's right. not in the front of the building. Okay. And, um, I know this is, I just wanted to check my geography here. It sounds like the back of your lot is fairly well wooded. It's got uh, some cedars that just sort of block off that back area. Right. So you can't, there's really no vision sight, anything through there. There's nothing back there. There's no buildings. There's no, if, if there are buildings would be uh, the sheds that are down lower, but there'll be no light that'll okay. get to them because of the trees. Great. Um, do other board members have questions? Anything else they wanted to bring up? Yeah, I just had a couple. Um, so as far as the technology of the wash, washing, anything changing as far as like speed or uh, something that would be maybe more desirable for people to <laughs> use or, you know, or whatnot? Like froze. Well, that's the re one of the reasons why we're putting another one in there is to give you another option for your choices. So okay. you'll have one that will touch your car, one that will not touch your car, and then you'll have two that you can do yourself if you don't wish to uh, go through that. Did I answer your question? I th no, I, that, that does. Um, I guess, the, you know, the second part of it is, you know, I think there's a pretty good conversation back and forth with public works about, you know, traffic and your knowledge of the site about traffic. Um, I think I just want to do our diligence here to make sure that, uh, you know, two months from now, we don't have traffic queuing going into the street, uh, <laughs> you know, any, any issues. And I, I just, 
um, didn't know if you uh, maybe expound upon your um, you know your communications with public works and just like why you think that um, that won't be an issue. Uh, Corey and I had a discussion about that because that was one of his concerns. He brought it up to me. And by the way, we're doing the build. You're going to actually gain three extra car parking spaces for cars or stacking spaces, which we think is good. And we're going to try to work it so we can have double lines to, so that we can get, if their cars do get there, we'll be able to try and funnel them as traffic into the correct lanes that where they want to go. So it's, uh, you know, so it'll be more uh, regular, more in line with everything you want. But in all the years, like I said, we've never had uh, the cars in, go into the streets, no matter how busy we've been. And we're reducing the number of bays to four instead of five. And self-service take a long time to wash a car. So we think we're going to speed things up. It's different than the other car washes up the street because they have free memberships. Mm -hmm. And and they just people will sit there and wait in line. And it's also a conveyor belt system. So it just keeps going. So cars can keep inching along. Ours is more of a stop, wait six minutes to eight minutes, next person goes in. Most people, when they see more than three or four cars in line, they just go and they come back another time. So we don't ever accumulate the road lines. That sounds accurate. Rob, anything else on that one? I believe. Um, I guess, yeah, just want one more. We think we're frozen again. Yeah. So a touchless car wash, you don't think that that could be, uh, you know, more popular and all of a sudden you have much more uh, use than you've had in the past? You know, it's all based on time, no matter how much uh, you want to see a lot of cars go through, I can only get maybe 10 through in an hour. Yep. So it's not like you can do it like Fred said, one after the other every minute or whatever, you know, to send people through. So that's the way it lines up. And with the extra, you know, we're going to think three to four spaces we'll be able to get by having them line up a thing that gives us even more room for stacking. But even today, if you went by the car wash today, the line went right down, um, you know, laser was very busy and they had it right to the end of their driveway. And yeah. you went by our place and we were busy too. We had, you know, a couple of cars in the self-service bay and three cars or four cars even in line for the automatic. I had room for another five cars, not to mention the one we could have lined up uh, in front of the self-service. It just, we had no problem getting that line in on such a crazy busy day. And it doesn't get any busier than right now during mud season. So we, we've we gotten a pretty good track record. We haven't had anything ever get into the roads that I've never been called once in 35 years of, of uh, doing this, of traffic getting into the road. And I have no plan on it doing it now. And I have two places in Barrie, one on the north by Granite Museum. And that's my smallest lot. And it's actually built very much like what we want to do here in Montpelier to yep. self-service and, and the same two style automatics, a laser and, and a, a soft touch. And even that place doesn't have the cars getting the road. Um, so I think we've been pretty good about that. They move through pretty good. Great. Thank you. That's uh, some helpful information for me. Um, thank you much. You're welcome. Um, the other things here, um, is the, uh, changes in the neighborhood. Um, that's the last sort of criteria that we need to look at. And that is to make sure that, um, that the impacts of the use shall be consistent with the neighborhood, especially with respect to noise, hours of operation, other features that define the area's character. Um, and, uh, the application or actually Meredith's report, uh, Mostly clears that up, I think. The project will decrease the number of wash bays at the facility. Um, they're going to be closed, which should actually be quieter. And it is essentially the exact same purpose that it has been, so that I don't feel like it's changing anything a lot. Do, do we, other people have other thoughts on that, on matching the neighborhood concerns? It might be useful for you to just elaborate briefly on the noise question. Is there anything? She, she hit it on the head. Yeah. Self-service are the same as they've always been, but there'll be two instead of four. So that'll be better. And then the uh, automatics will both have new doors put on, which will also reduce the noise level. 
Thanks. Also, the new automatic we're putting on is a brush unit, and it's significantly quieter than the the high pressure uh, unit next to it. Great, thank you. I would entertain a motion. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Meredith sent around a late email. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's for the next application. Yeah. Okay. I was like, cool. <laughs> I didn't think about this now. Next one. So. Uh, if there's no further comment from the board, I'll uh, make the motion to approve the project at um, 172 <laughs> River Street uh, in its entirety. Uh, okay. Um, do you want a little more official reading, is that Meredith? Are you, are you good with that? Okay. Yeah. It's the, the the motion itself doesn't go okay. into the decision, okay. so it's fine. Um. So we've got a motion. Do we have a second? You can't second it. Though. <laughs> it's so helpful, though. Really, thank you. <laughs> um, so a second from Alex. Great. Um, any further discussion? Okay, let's do it by roll call. Uh, Alex, how do you vote? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Catherine? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So that's unanimous. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank yeah. you very much. Good luck. Thank official, you. Official decision. Night. Official decision will be the written one. Um, and because there were no conditions on approval, once the decision is finalized and signed, we'll contact you when we've got that and the permits. Um, we aren't relying on mail too much these days for anyone local. So <laughs> I will probably email you guys when it's ready and somebody can come pick it up instead of us having to send it certified mail and hope that somebody catches you to sign it. I got my address on there. You yeah. My brother's address. One of us yep. will get it. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you for all your help. You're Bye. welcome. Bye. Thank you. Okay, our next applicant is 378 East Montpelier Road. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not very substantial. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Catherine. Oh, yeah, I didn't see the email. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's very short. It's very, very short. If for some reason that's not working, just let me know. I can always plug it into my laptop. Uh, Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to swear in the applicants and anyone who would like to give testimony during this. So if you can please raise your right hand. If you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury. Excellent. Great start. Okay. Um, quick overview, Meredith, and we'll let the applicant run with the description. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to do more of a, a procedural overview. Um, Perfect. The application includes construction of an addition, and that addition is large enough to trigger major site plan review. I'm not allowed to do major site plan review, even if there's nothing really controversial about it. It's one of those things that the DRB is required to approve. Um, I don't see any really red flags for this. There's a few little things in the staff report mm -hmm. but um, that, that you have to make decisions on, but otherwise, okay. not crazy. Um, and for the record, could I get your names? Uh, John Gay with Casella Waste Systems. Okay. Brian Bodwin with Sanborn Head and Associates. Great. Thank you so much. I go by Joe. <laughs> okay. Um, confuse things a little bit. <laughs> uh, if you could maybe give us a brief overview of what your plan is, and then maybe we can go through the application and just clarify sure. some of the spots. Yep. Um, so we are proposing uh, to replace the existing um, administrative offices. Uh, at our facility um, that was destroyed this summer, July, uh, with flooding that we had. Um, so essentially the building um, was rendered um, totaled and um, we started to uh, work down the path with Meredith and, and the city on a replacement uh, office uh, for um, the staff there. And um, what we're proposing to do is move the location out of the floodway 
Um, it was obviously in the floodway. Uh, so it's it's moving, I guess, further north and east um, and will be a, uh, directly adjacent to the existing structure that's there. Um, I keep referring to the-, the... Are you, Sorry, Brian, are you doing the share screen? You need to do a share screen. Oh, so I thought it was sharing. Remotely so that um, Joe- You got it. Can see it. And then it should fill the screen. It says it's disabled. Uh, oh, you know what? I think that's a security thing. So hold on one second. <laughs> Sorry. Um, city Council. Mm -hmm. Just allow all participants to share screen. Not working. Maybe not. Well, it will be eventually. Meredith can also share from here. So that's it's just sharing. Some I'll just let, let her know what you need to have shared and she can share it for you, right? Yeah. I mean, I can pull, if you're just pulling it up from the application, I can do that. You should be able to. Yeah, it's just saying host disabled participant screen sharing. You see the screen. <laughs> share. Oh. It was in two different places. Try that one. Yep, that did it. Why it's not yeah, where were we? We were on talking about moving the building. Did you close it or exit? Could have. Hang on. It just says... Sorry, Joe. Try this again. Sorry. It's okay. Here we go. That's open. Now you got to share screen. Yeah. There you go. Fantastic. So I think there's some value to having the site plan up. Yeah. That's where we're sure. kind of walking through it. Uh, the gray building that you see um, in the cutout is the existing building. And of course, the blue with the Casella logo, it would be the new office. Um, so we are proposing uh, for the replacement offices uh, to be a bit larger um, than the, the prior office space. Um, we had for years rented space from Chuck uh, Haynes um, and still do, but we're, uh, what we want to do is just get everybody moved into our own you know, office. Uh, the proposed office would be three stories. Um, the second and third levels uh, would have the administrative functions, the offices, conference room, uh, bathrooms, uh, typical office space. Uh, the bottom floor, um, we would have access to, um, we'd like to once in a while pull out a grill and, and, and cook lunch for the, for the drivers and the staff. And, um, you know, so we want to have access for, for storage and things like that. Um, so that's what the bottom floor would be. Uh, full elevator access from the bottom floor to the to the second and third floors, um, and um, yeah, I think that's essentially it. Unfortunately, you know, we had the issue with the flood, um, uh, and so you know we're looking to um, move to the next chapter and. Um, Increase the size of the office a bit and uh, get everybody together in one location. Okay. Um, do people have questions? I mean, do we want to just start going through this? Um, huh. I uh, let's see if I can find this here. No, actually, I think I wrote it on your comments in the application. I had just a generic question. I didn't. Uh, I've never seen the term before. What is um? How how do you place in addition backfill material will be placed in one foot compacted lifts <laughs> to minimize that's the flood hazard stuff. I had to include the whole, okay. whole cover letter. Right. A whole bunch of stuff at the beginning of that cover letter all has to do with river hazard area regulations that would it be, I have to deal with. Would it be fair if somebody told me though? 
I can answer that. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I swear to God, I haven't seen it before. Right. I was like, so, uh, <laughs> but at any rate, I just I was not. All that means is term. it's related to when you, you build a building, mm -hmm. you're placing fill, whether below the building or around it. Yeah. You want to do that in what's called structural lifts. And to do so, you have to compact it in one foot lifts. And then you test it. Then you put another one foot in. Then you test it. Okay. Make sure that you're meet, reaching certain I compact I was requirements. With the term. Okay. Yep. Thank Hold you. up the building and the surrounding areas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just explain why don't feel weird about not knowing. I was like, I, I just have no idea what that is. <laughs> in the last year. Um, I have okay. learned enough. Go back to this. Um, <clears throat> so it sounds like you're pretty much all set with um, setbacks and um, you're not hitting any new borders or anything. So that's good. Um, this is this is the first application I've seen with that whole river hazard piece in it. Yeah. So that's kind of was uh, interesting to follow. Um, and that is not something that we, is in, in our jurisdiction. Yep, and I actually took, if you've gone and seen, pulled it from the pending applications page, there was more river hazard stuff in there. Right. I actually pulled a lot of it from here. Right, makes sense. Um, but I thought that leaving some of it in where there was some context made sense. And you know, I wasn't going to cut up the cover sheet. That didn't make sense at all. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> one memo. Um, it's going through it here. Uh, the, um, it, it sounds like the erosion control plan is a fairly substantial part of this. And it, was there a graphic on this? The erosion control. Um, I mean, I think it's it not really. It was. Yeah, this project's below one acre in size, so they don't need to have a formal erosion control plan. Okay. All right. They just have to follow the Vermont rules for stormwater management okay. during construction. And there's, I mean, there's a large area of disturbance, but it's all pretty flat. Right. So the, 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 um, the slopes thing is nice, Joe. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it didn't trigger like a big formal plan, but there's notes in there about, I think, in the, the cover memo about the fact that there will be, you know, erosion control measures okay. put in place because they still have to follow the basic right. standards under the zoning regs. Okay. Uh, the applicant's getting a st state stormwater permit, so we're good there. Um, and it looks like the Department of Public Works was fine with that as well. Yeah, so understand. that was that was that um, email that I sent around to all the board members, and I give you a copy, Frank, when you came in, um, that I did get this, this afternoon. Um, uh, final written comments from the Department of Public Works that basically they don't have any issues. Um, the DPW will work out final details of utility connections through the utility public works permitting process. Um, and that Kurt Monica, the director, just asked that there be a note stating that the applicant shall work with the DPW to obtain the necessary permits so that, related to those connections. That could be a condition on the um, decision or just, or just a note? It, okay. can be a, yeah, it can be a finding of fact um, in the... Um, decisions that I can find in there. It doesn't need to be a condition. If the board feels like it needs to be a condition, it can, but I mean, they right. have to get those permits. So we usually try not to condition a zoning permit on obtaining other permits. Yeah, it usually causes confusion. Yeah. And I, I might that. add too that the existing structure had a full municipal water and sewer service as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> I have a process question. This is more for our learning for Meredith on this on around stormwater. Is there anything we should be aware of? Um, any difference of the process when it's a river hazard area around stormwater? No, um, because the river hazard area um, as a whole, it's not your standard stormwater, mm -hmm. right? It's a whole separate situation that is about really more about life and safety and reducing property loss during flood events. Okay. Um, and so your your stormwater, where does the water go after it, you know, falls off a building isn't the situation so much as what happens when you have too much water coming up from somewhere or other. That makes sense. Um, it's helpful yep. clarification. Yep. Yeah. Um parking was fine. Right. Understood that being like that. <laughs> what you do you do except for the bike rack oh you right do have the board has the option to may require bicycle access and storage um i suppose it's a little more like going down the car wash but not much <laughs> um 
Yeah, I, I'm okay with that bite back. Yeah. yeah do you think, I mean, do you think it's, it's I mean, there's also a, plenty of space on the site. So if somebody did want to ride their bike over there, it's not like mm -hmm. there's no untrafficked way where you can took your bike for a little while, I believe. Um, so the parking moved, basically. It's the same number of sites, is my understanding. That's correct. It's parking moved from, and there isn't really a front, given the street frontage, um, that you're not on the street, kind of. You have your own uh, right of way in there. Um, so existing parking to be relocated around the, to the side of it. Is that where you're going to move it to? Uh, if you, I do have it up on the plan. Okay. If you want to see it, I can highlight it here. So this yeah. is this is an existing office building. You can okay. kind of see the distance. It's off the yeah. it's the maintenance garage. Yeah. This box here is where the new space is going to go. So the existing space is where we're here. Yeah. And here. Mm -hmm. And so they're basically moving as we get. Uh oh, just happened. Um. It, I, it was probably a wire connection with everything. It may have also yeah. just been the the um, projector. That's right. So basically, those parking spots moved to the front of the building. To the front of the so building. So you can see this orange square here. That's where the old office okay, thanks. is. That's helpful. Yeah, so in as much as you have a front of your building. And you there is, it looks like there's an accessible spot. Right yeah, there's a handicap too. spot yeah. right up here. There's a handicap ramp that approaches from this end of the building to the first floor. Right. And so that's where the handicap spot is. Um, Meredith, this question is for you, I think. Um, when you're looking at the total impervious surface, mm -hmm. does, does this access road also count or not? I just wondered that. It... I mean, the access road is technically off the parcel, right? right. Like, that's right. an easement. What are you talking about? There is an yeah, easement. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yes, easement. So. And so you so, wouldn't be responsible for that? No. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's not technically calculated. a different talking parcel. talking about this right here. Yeah, that's technically yeah. a different parcel. Okay. Right? Right. Uh, my understanding, based on where the property line is drawn there. That's my understanding. Yeah. So that's... It's, it's shown as an easement. Yeah. That's what that hatch is for. So... Yep. Okay. Yep, because it's by... All the, the coverage is by parcel. Okay. Um, And this is all surveyed. And paints. No, it's just one. Oh, it's just... Okay. Paint. Yeah. Thanks. Just yours. Okay. Thanks. All right. I have a question. The transfer... Uh, Function and and the uh, uh, recycling centers that remains untouched. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not uh, unchanged. Anywhere. The drop off, okay. the, the municipal or um, the residential drop off is unchanged. Right. Yeah. Um. One thing that I would like to touch on is our uh, landscaping plan. Sure. And I think there's a map for that as well. Right? So one of one of the, one of the ways that you um, covered to get the. Uh, appropriate amount of impervious surface was to add some garden beds. Is that right? Garden fence? Beds. Yes, if you, Bed. beds. Yes. So this whole area here is is the landscaping area. Okay. To the front of the building. And then they're planting trees that got washed away during the storm. They're replanting some trees along this riverbank. So that's the landscaping for this project. Did you have trees there before? There were. there were along the river or next to the building along the river yeah. so that the flood took those all out okay just wondering about that yeah so there's i mean you've got the one the big area there that's also around the stormwater yeah, situation what, yes. and then you've got the between the parking and the building and then on the the west guard right too here. right yeah, yeah. Okay. And I can, if you look back at this sheet, it might actually be a little clearer. So everything in this light green. Yep. This is all landscape area. Okay. 
And so this is the stormwater treatment feature that's in the middle of it. So in a hundred words or less, how exactly does that work? The storm <laughs> <laughs> 100, sure, hundred words or less. <laughs> this basically this is primarily for rooftop treatment. Okay. So there's going to be a rooftop drain that drains into this little garden swale, if you will, and into what's called a biofiltration treatment practice. And okay. what that has in it is basically there's baskets that are buried below grade that have basically they're wide open. And then above that, you put in filter material and above that, some sandy material. So what happens is the material, that the water as it flows down into that treatment system migrates through the sand, gets clean, gets uh, collected into those catch basins, if you will, below, um, and then gets discharged uh, to a stormwater uh, culvert. Okay. Thank you. Did you count? I was I was thinking you were you were pretty good there that you got under 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 I thought that was reasonable. <laughs> I'm not very so much about it. Um, okay. So uh, just to clarify, also the um, the garage that's a maintenance garage to the to the right of that. And that is going to um those are those two buildings are, are gonna actually be joined or is that doorway now through the two of them? Um there there is gonna be a doorway uh from the office into the shop, yes. Okay. But I believe that the buildings are actually separate. Uh, it's a it's an addition, but yeah. It depends which regulations you're looking under. So which you can't. I must say, Meredith, I also really appreciate the number of regulations you had to review this by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you mean the fact that there's two sets of zoning regulations that apply to this application? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. Okay. Um, so another thing that I think would be good to just do a quick review of is lighting. So He's got a lighting plan up here, I think. Second. There's a couple, but this is the one for the new building. Don't 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 make things harder. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So what are we looking at here exactly? So this is the uh, the new office space. Yeah. And these WP numbers are all affiliated with a, a light. So okay. WP2 is on each side and WP3 here and here. So, and then there's another light that's being proposed in front of the maintenance garage along the walkway. Okay. And um, how does this vary from the existing lighting that is on the... Is it, is it is it building still there? The office that was previously there it's still there, uh, but we are hoping to demo it next week. Yeah. Um, is this more light? It's a bigger building, yes. so I would think that it would be more light. Um, we're well below the total lumens, though. The okay. Property. I think the only the only question I had really raised for this was. Um, there was one um, unshielded, yeah, whether potentially unshielded lights that were staying in the garage um, should be brought into compliance. Um, you know, there's if they're unshielded and for security purposes, as long as they've got, say, timers or, or motion sensors on them, it's something that um, the board could potentially have, you know, okay as a, as a continuing security measure. Okay. Um, but generally, if you're changing a class, a, a, a type of lighting on a building or on a Not parcel, you're supposed to bring everything into compliance. Mm -hmm. um, and technically, you're not supposed to have unshielded lights, lights unless they're for security purposes, usually. And where where is that light? That's EL9? Uh, yes, I think EL... Is that on the, you said it's on yep. the front of the maintenance building? EL nine. Yeah, EL eight and EL nine, I think, were the ones that were remaining. So I can also find yeah. it in my So we did need some kind of confirmation about how they were directed. Yeah, do you have the I've got photos? photos. Yeah, I'm just now? trying to Yeah. It's probably gonna be easier if I just go to the photo. 
And the photos had the numbers on them too, yeah, I think. They did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. So EL9. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. these... <laughs> Seem to be pointing out. Yeah. Yep. And they does look like that. Those look like they can be turned down. They do look adjustable. Um, so that, so having those lights coming straight down would be okay, right? Yeah, as long as the light is going below the horizontal. On, um, on the lamp fixture. Yep. Um, yeah. Or if, I mean, if they need to be facing out because they're pointed towards something where you need the light to go further, it would need to be sort of a timer or security situation so that they're not. You know, or, or motion sensor situation. So, what are the what is the purpose of those lights? Is it yeah, so? Uh, we're trying to noodle through it right now, but I saw a couple of those lights are, have got to come off. They got to be removed. Yeah. So there was, I think, I think that the one of those that looked like it needs to be com coming off is EL one, based on where you were putting the new lights and where the addition was going. I think okay. EL one is coming off and EL two is coming off. Yeah. Based on my comparison of the plans, it was EL8 and EL9. Yeah, that... So this is EL8 right here, Joe? Yeah. Okay. And EL9's right here. Okay. Got it. Yeah, we we have absolutely no problem with switching those out for a compliant light. I mean, you don't know. It's not an issue. I think that makes sense. Yeah. So I think, you know, the board can approve it um, with the permit, um, you know, could, Specify that the lights are compliant. Or or they just have to get me, you know, before I issue the permit, I would okay. have to review the lights. Okay. Maybe that's, and make sure that the yeah. new light fixtures comply. Okay. That would be good. Sure. Board members, questions on that? Lighting? Okay. So we're once again in um we're in the architectural standards of buildings must appear similar in mass and scale to structural structures typical of the neighborhood match the building and roof forms typical of the neighborhood um avoid box like forms mm -hmm. I know yurts only <laughs> that's uh... okay uh so it seems that. Um, just saying, do you have like a, well, I guess I could just look on my application here. Um, it seems like it's very in scale with the building that's there. I mean, it's it's more appropriately scaled than the other office wells, frankly, um, so that you've increased your, uh, what that looks like. And then, you know, the neighborhood around there, what are, what are your two neighbors there? Uh, so Curly Fuels, the yeah. gas station. Uh -huh. And they show that access road, right? Is that right? Excuse me. If if you're just one thing, if you want to say anything on the record, you got to be sworn in, and then come up to the microphone so everybody can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, Pearly Fuels is on one side of you. Is that what you said? And Agway, yeah. And Agway, okay. So both of those are very large, very commercial properties. Um, it doesn't seem inconsistent with me at all. The neighborhood it seems like they've actually done a fairly decent job with the facade and trying to break it up and make it interesting and somewhat human leveled and gardens um i'm really interested in avoid the box like forms for buildings no don't even I, get you started okay <laughs> never mind i wasn't part of drafting the architectural you know standards for different okay. zoning districts um <laughs> So I don't, I, so this, I guess I'm not sure whether this is more of a um, river hazard area that I'm thinking about, but just where the utilities are, is that all river hazard? Oh, you mean like the elevation inside the building type yeah. situation? Yeah, that's all river hazard and that's all been okay. checked out. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, it looked but, like it had been, but I was just, yep. I wanted no, to make sure that that's not us. That is not you. Okay. That's, that's a whole separate set of information that I pulled out of here, um, including all the specifications on the, the flood vents and all of that. You guys didn't need to worry about those calculations. <laughs> um, yeah, there she is there. Uh, 
board members in the room, board members on Zoom, any other questions or issues? Can you take off the share screen so I can see yeah, absolutely. people's mm -hmm. faces a little better? Awesome. Thank you. I think we covered the key points. Huh? Good catch on the lighting. I think that that's the yeah. be resolved easily. Sounds like it. All and right. There it is. Just as a double check, you guys are all okay with my reasoning on the parking shade trees? Yes. Yep. Awesome. That was fine. Seems like the most efficient way to do it. Yeah. Fabulous. Very. Uh, so we have a, um, anyone interested in making a motion? We grant the request for major site plan approval for the construction of a 7,170 foot square foot addition to the maintenance garage at 378 East Montpelier Road, as presented in application D20240019 and supporting and supplemental materials. Prior to the permit issuance, applicants shall provide the zoning administrator with a, an updated lighting plan that conforms with section three tools. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Yes, that was an excellent motion. Perfect. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was. Uh, all right, let's do a roll call vote on this then. No further discussion, Alex? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Uh, Rob? Yes. Joe? Yes. Catherine? Yes. And yes for myself as well. Uh, just need to get Meredith a little updated lighting plan and you're good to go. Great. Thank you. So I will, we'll get going on the written decision. Um, and that can, if I get done with that first, that'll get issued. Um, but if you get a lighting, updated lighting plan with the new lights, those two locations to be ahead of time, then we'll be able to do the decision and the permit at the same time. Otherwise, that's all I'll be waiting for if the decision Great. comes out first. Um, and I, I do know I owe you another, another permit too. So that's in my, in my queue. All right. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Just stay up here. <laughs> Here it is. Okay. Um, has anyone, has everyone had a chance to review the meeting minutes from the March 18, 2024 meeting? I can make a motion to approve for minutes. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All of those against? Hey, we're good there. Um, the next meeting is April 1st. Oh, that's nope, today. That's April 15th. April 15th. You were looking at the minutes. I know. I had the minutes. <laughs> that's the agenda in my hand. Sorry. Uh, April uh, 15th, there are two applications. Um, one is a uh, sketch plan subdivision. And my brain is fritzing right now on what the other one is. Um, they're on the pending applications page. Sorry, it's suddenly very loud out in the hallway. Um, what was the other one? Oh, um, the other one is a conditional use. Yeah, can you shut the door, Kevin? Thank you. You're awesome. Um, so there's a... a just a two two partial subdivision sketch plan, and then we're going to be revisiting um, the Vermont College of Fine Arts library. A different applicant is looking at making that into a performing arts hub. Ooh, which which structure? Uh, the library, but Vermont College of Fine Arts, so thirty five College Street. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is a little bit simpler than the prior proposal. Which um, one building, not three. Yep, yeah, it's one building, um, and they're keeping it also partly more of performing arts academic use. So the basement would be actually classrooms. 
Um, but the upstairs would be a performance space, both for the classes that are taking place there, but also for visiting artists um, and have a little cafe. So take a look at that one in particular, if you can pull it off the pending applications page and get a little look at it ahead of time. Um, it's yeah. you know similar, but different. So What's it's- happening with the, uh... Oh, oh, Greenway's up there. They're up there. Yep, they're up there. They've they I think they've signed on multiple buildings. Um, so there's two different. There's the Greenway, um, and then there's the um, school that had been up there. They've expanded and have new school has two buildings. Um, Nova Hall, the big hall. Is that I can't, I always get, I, because I have to look at the numbers, the addresses so often, I don't always keep track of the, the buildings, but, um, you know, I think that, you know, you may end up seeing, um, some sign proposals come up before you for, for where there's, you know, the big entities that have multiple buildings needing to get waivers for signs because the system up there doesn't quite fit with the regulations, but um, we've actually have a lot of signs that are waiting for the zoning changes to happen, <laughs> which hopefully will be this Wednesday, but we'll see. Okay. City Council keeps surprising us and <laughs> not adopting anything. Uh, I'll keep you posted on that because once they've adopted stuff, you guys will, anybody who has paper copies will need new copies of the zoning regulations. I know. Um, I'm and <laughs> even if you just look at them remotely, I'll be giving you new places to go and download. Um, be a whole nother, whole nother packet. Yeah. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> How many stacks do you have, Kevin? Quite a few. What's that? How, How many, many stacks do you have? You've been here long enough. You have a lot of paper copies. I've got a lot of paper copies. Actually, we lost our old copies. If you have old copies, that I'm not are sure. Still, I did. I did move some clean house. Stack and I did clear a if, stuff. If you happen to have any of the old I'm versions, let me know. I know because... where it would be if I do have them. Okay. So because we we lost our paper copies of the old ones. The only paper ones. Um. Yeah. I mean, we've we've got a lot of electronics, but not the really really old ones. Um. We we lost a lot in the flood. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That was. That was a tragic. Yeah. Uh, any further business this evening? I'll make people in the audience were letters. Yes. 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 We'll add nothing back. It's great civic engagement. Yeah. People willing to come to the meeting. Yeah. You know? No, that's good. It's a way to way to get out and about. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn. No second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Hi. Thanks very much. See you guys on two weeks.